This tutorial will give you an overview of the LFO plugin in VDMX and ways it can be used to animate any parameter. We'll go over some practical ways to use LFO waveforms by looping a zooming logo, creating an infinite kaleidoscopic effect, and randomizing parameters that automate glitch effects. Our VDMX interface is a simple one layer setup. Let's trigger a visual on layer 1 to show how LFO works when used as a data source to drive parameters of the ripples effect currently on the layer. Let's limit the maximum value of the level slider to 15 by entering the value in the UI inspector. Now let's add the LFO plugin from the workspace inspector. We'll snap it into place along with our other windows. First let's explain the LFO in terms of animation. You can think of it as a timeline that generates values. The values come from custom or preset curves or waveforms. The point at which the playhead touches the curve is the current value. The higher the point on the curve, the greater the value. The lower the point on the curve, the smaller the value. All of the default LFO waves are displayed when you add the plugin. This drop down menu at the top here lets us select each one individually. The first is waveform. Values rise gradually, hits a peak and slows down until the end of the timeline. Right click on the level parameter, select LFO1 and choose waveform as the data source. Now we can see how the ripples effect is animating with waveform as our LFO data source. We'll increase the rate to 2 to make the effect more pronounced. The next is sine, which is a standard sine curve. Let's make sine our data source. Notice how the effect moves in a smooth oscillating motion. The cosine curve produces a bouncy animation. Again, let's make this our data source. Another way we can do this is by holding right click or control on the waveform itself and dragging to the level parameter. Notice how our effect smoothly moves in and out but with the short bounce. Lastly is the ramp curve. At first glance you can see that the values increase in a constant upward slope. This is a great curve for controlling certain parameters that cycle back to their beginning values, such as offset here in the ripples effect. Let's disable the data source on level. Now let's use the ramp curve as a data source for the offset parameter. There are other waveforms available that you can choose by right clicking on the LFO window. Let's select the triangle wave. The new waveform is available under the drop down menu. It's labeled as Waveform 2. You can rename this in the LFO inspector by double clicking on its name. Let's rename this to Custom and use it as a data source. Now let's go over the LFO interface and some of the options available. Just like video playback, there are transport controls such as pause and play. Scratch allows you to scrub the playhead of the LFO by clicking, holding, and dragging the mouse. The forward and reverse jump buttons advance playback based on seconds or measures, depending on if your LFO is synced to clock or BPM. Playback can be slowed down or sped up by adjusting the rate. Reverse the LFO playback by changing the rate direction with this arrow button. We can also change the way the LFO loops. Click on the drop down. Selecting once, place the LFO once and stops at the end of the timeline. Reversing loop ping pongs playback back and forth. The default is loop, which starts from the beginning once it reaches the end. Custom curves can be created by manipulating points on any waveform. Let's create a Bezier curve waveform by right clicking on the LFO window and selecting it. To move a point, first click on the curve, then drag the point anywhere on the graph. To add a point, hold option and click anywhere on the curve. Let's add a few new points. To adjust the shape of a curve, hold command on a point and drag the cursor to adjust its shape. Let's go ahead and adjust these points. Right click and drag the curve to our ripples level parameter to set it as the data source. And now we can see how our parameter animates to this curve. Let's get into some practical examples. First is a simple animated logo. Let's remove the ripples effect and trigger the dock optic logo. 
We'll go with a simple back and forth zoom animation. Add the zoom effect from the geometry adjustment effects. Let's limit the maximum and minimum values. Set the minimum to 0.5 and the max to 1. Next, we can simply make the cosine wave a data source for the level parameter of our zoom effect. You can always adjust the LFO rate to speed up or slow down the animation. Now let's create an infinite kaleidoscopic effect. First let's remove the zoom effect and trigger a new visual. Add kaleidoscope from the stylized effects category. We'll be animating the slide x parameter to loop infinitely. This is possible because it's a parameter that cycles back to its initial value such as offset in our previous example. Select the ramp curve from the LFO window. Let's right click and drag it to the slide x parameter on the kaleidoscope effect to use as a data source. Now we have a looping kaleidoscopic effect we can apply on any existing content. The last effect we'll create is something more twitchy and glitch based. Let's remove the kaleidoscope effect and trigger a new visual. Let's add two effects, slit scan from the glitch category and erode from stylize. Under LFO, let's add a new waveform random by right clicking and adding the random wave. The random waveform is useful because it generates a variety of values. For the slit scan effect, let's bring the line width down to 0.15 and bring the angle up to 1. We'll automate the spacing parameter with the random LFO wave. Right click and use it as a data source. Now we have a nice glitchy video separation effect. Erode will add some intense blinking for added effect. We'll go ahead and use the random waveform as a data source for the intensity parameter. So now we have a pretty cool glitch effect using LFO to drive our parameters. We hope this tutorial provided some new ideas to play with LFO waveforms. Use the LFO plugin to automate different aspects of your visuals and create some unique effects. As always, check out our website for content to use in VDMX or some of the other VDMX tutorials to help you get familiar with the software. Thanks for watching and have fun in VDMX.